America's so-called war on terror produced images and accounts that ignited a world of questions about torture and the U.S. treatment of suspects. American people need to know we're using techniques within the law to protect them. Two years after George W. Bush left the White House, Let's talk about waterboarding. The former commander-in-chief admitted his stamp of approval for the use of interrogation so techniques like waterboarding, dubbed inhumane and illegal under U.S. law and the Geneva Conventions. Why is waterboarding legal, in your opinion? Because the lawyer said it was legal. He said it did not fall within the, the Anti-Torture Act. I'm not a lawyer. And, uh, but you've got to trust the judgment of people around you, and I do. The Bush administration also chose to disregard the judgment of a top advisor who warned that the CIA's interrogation of terror suspects equated to felony war crimes. According to a secret memo obtained by Wired magazine, in 2006, State Department counselor Philip Zelikow warned the White House that controversial interrogation techniques such as water boarding, stress positions, and cramped confinement are prohibited under U.S. law. And under American law, there is no precedent for excusing treatment that is intrinsically cruel, even if the state asserts compelling need to use it. I think there needs to be an accounting in the United States of what was done over the last 10 years in the name of Americans. There is a precedent because uh, after the Second World War, uh, the United States actually executed Japanese soldiers who had, uh, who had um, used torture, water torture, against American prisoners. They took action against the Japanese when they did this. The U.S. Uh, has been on record as opposing water torture when carried out by other countries. So there is a clear legal case to say that, uh, you know, action must be taken. We're still evaluating. Two weeks before taking office, U.S. President Barack Obama steered clear of citing America's historic commitments to international justice. Obviously, we're going to be looking at past practices. Uh, and uh, I don't believe that anybody is above the law. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I also have a belief that we need to look forward as, low, as opposed to look, looking backwards. Last June, Obama's U.S. Justice Department dropped 99 out of 101 cases against CIA interrogators over the use of torture. I'm afraid that the current administration wants to keep those options open. They don't want to label these techniques as crimes or torture because that would prohibit them from using them. By leaving that legal definition, however slightly gray, they leave themselves the option of applying these techniques once again. And that is what is frightening here. Scholars, attorneys, and human rights experts around the world have called for the prosecution of senior Bush administration officials who designed and ordered torture tactics. However, critics say the unspoken agreement within countries proclaiming to pioneer democracy is to never turn on your own. The problem is, is that uh, in the West, we, you know, we, we make great clay, uh, we, we, we sort of promote our great democracies, but there is a kind of stitch up between the, the elite parties that they will not press charges and they will not take legal action against the crimes of, uh, of previous administrations. Through the use of torture, rendition and secret prisons, America's moral position around the world has undoubtedly shifted. And while the U.S. will likely continue barking the beacons of freedom and democracy, critics say the more important question to ask is, who's even listening anymore? Marina Portnaya, RT, New York.